Hey there. Uh, this year, in my research, I've realized something new. The Korean War was worth fighting. Uh, today, I'm going unproduced because my Ethiopia script just keeps getting longer and longer, and I think Ukraine and Russia are getting a little too complicated to do the unproduced rant on that that I was contemplating. So today, I want to talk about 20th century history and the Cold War specifically, and even more specifically, the Korean War. Now, I'm a guy who's pretty anti-intervention, which is something you've probably realized if you've watched any of my videos. So I was certainly accustomed to thinking of like World War II as the last good war. I mean, even I think that, you know, one of the reasons World War II happened was that the U.S. was dumb enough to get involved in World War I, but that's a whole different uh, story that I've made other videos on in the past. But anyway, I'm a very anti-intervention guy. I don't want the U.S. involved overseas. Obviously, I think that World War II was a good thing, and I'd sort of assumed that really nothing after that was worth doing. Um, last year, I ran a poll asking folks what they wanted me to be, wanted my next big research project to be, and the response was American Empire. And the direction that my studies have taken me in is basically uh, spending a lot of time looking at the past hundred years. I believe that the United States sort of became the most powerful country in the world at some point in the spring of 1917 when we bailed out the British. Um, and so it's been about a century. Um, and a lot of that century was the Cold War. And as I said, I'm a pretty anti-interventionist guy. I'm not a big fan of military power generally. And I'd always been pretty snooty about the Korean War. I was like, that is, you know, obviously a terrible waste. Um, I sort of, I made a mistake that I, uh, that I castigate other people for making about two very similar wars. Uh, you know, I got really angry when Wonder Woman, uh, a film that came out a couple years back, basically treated the Germans in World War I like they were the Germans in World War II, when they are two extraordinarily different uh, wars. And I think the way that I had seen the Korean War, and I think I'm not the only person who does this is to take the Vietnam War, which is something that is very present in the, the, the sort of mindscape of people my age and older, um, and is pretty you know renowned to be a failure and a waste. Uh, most people agree on that. Uh, if you're not working for a you know defense company at some remove, you probably uh, believe that the Vietnam War was a waste. So I think uh, I, I committed the even worse crime of uh, mixing up uh, the Vietnamese War and the Korean War. And, and treating them as though they were somehow the same. Oh, this is this uh, sort of wasteful thing. Of course, as I studied it more, I realized just how terribly wrong I was about this. The Korean conflict was a massive effort. Um, it was uh, fought not just by the United States. Um, the Vietnam, Vietnam War, of course, there were other people fighting, but it was more of a US, exclusively US show or US dominated show than the Korean War was. Um, but yeah, I'd always sort of assumed that the Korean War was like the Vietnam War. It was sort of a waste. It was a terrible loss of life. It was, you know, we shouldn't have been there. Um, but what's kind of interesting, um, I've probably read now, you know, three or four accounts of the Korean War um, in different books. I think it was like half of one short book and just a chapter uh, in another book. And, you know, it just keeps coming up. And it's fascinating. Um, folks from all sorts of the political spectrum and... I read their accounts of the Korean War and I'm like, actually, that was a war that was worth fighting. And it plays into this, this image of the Cold War that I'm, I'm sort of generating. Um, and I'll talk about a lot more uh, in future videos, future years, which is sort of like the Cold War uh, had sort of two phases. There was the serious Cold War, um, which I think ran from about 1945 until about 1956 or so. And then there was sort of the phony war uh, beyond that, hanging on to it. And I think fighting the Korean War was a very important part. It played in a very important part in sort of stopping worldwide communism. Um, I'm going to do an incredibly reductive thing here, but I, I, think, it's, I think it's really kind of true. Uh, worldwide communism was actually a lot like the Islamic State. Um, it was sort of an ideology that got a lot further than it would have naturally because it was a U.S. proxy, because it was more useful. It was useful to the United States. So it got heavily funded by the United States. Um, the reason, well, <laughs> Stalin was able, Russia was able to uh, perform very well in World War II 
um, because of incredible slaughter of Russians, of course, but they would not have gotten as far as they could have, as they did without massive, massive, massive US support. The Soviet Union would not have made it anywhere near as far into Eastern Europe without the support of the United States. In Asia, communist parties in Vietnam and China, the story is a lot more complicated, but I also believe that US support of uh, Asian countries against Japan also ended up pushing communism a lot further than it would have been. So a lot like the Islamic State, um, we funded a whole bunch of jihadists to take down Assad, and then it got a little out of control. The Islamic State, of course, never managed to take down Assad, uh, and the communists were very successful in defeating Nazism, but that added to the momentum that communism had. So you had this period, 1945 into the mid-50s, where you had worldwide communism that was taking over continents. Um, Eastern Europe fell throughout the, 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 the late 40s, uh, China fell in 1949, it had momentum. And added to that, um, you had uh, decolonialization, uh, which was also fostered by the United States to a degree, um, which meant that you had all of these um, uh, third world countries, is a word that was, I think, proudly used back then, that were becoming independent, liked the idea of revolution, and found the sort of communist ideal a lot more attractive than the capitalist ideals that were more associated with the old European powers. So in the mid-1940s and the early 50s, there was a sort of perfect storm of success and power that was streaming towards uh, the communists. And at that point, late 40s, early 50s, until the death of Stalin, I believe it was 1952, don't quote me on that, um, until the death of Stalin, uh, Chairman Mao in China uh, recognized Stalin as sort of a not a superior, but certainly as, as sort of a, a trusted um, older brother, I guess. Um, and there was a unity there. Uh, you know, so soon after China's, the Chinese Communist Party's big success, there, was, there really was, at this point, I mean, this is the, the really key thing um, that I realized uh, reading up on this. There was a key point where sort of Stalin, Mao, um, the folks who were in charge of North Korea at that point, said, let's take a flyer on this. Let's see how much further we can push this. We've taken all these countries. South Korea looks vulnerable. Let's go for it. Let's see how far we can push this communist wave. And I am no fan of the domino theory, but I do believe in that period, the late 40s, early 50s, there was a real chance of that momentum continuing. And the Korean War, uh, U.S. and United Nations participation in the Korean War, stopped that momentum at great cost. So a key thing that I did not mention, that's the real contrast between the Korean War fought in the 1950s and the Vietnam War fought at the end of the 1960s, well, throughout the 1960s and into the 1970s. In Korea, the United States really was fighting against a unified communist front that was working together to see what they could do working together as far as bringing worldwide revolution uh, by force of arms. That was, that was a real thing. In Vietnam, um, really, you know, uh, 20 years later, 15 to 20 years later, um, it was actually the United States aggression against Vietnam was the only thing keeping the communist world together. Um, after the death of Stalin, uh, Mao decided that the Soviets weren't communist enough um, the Chinese and the Soviets actually fought limited border wars against each other. Um, after we left Vietnam, the first thing that China did was invade communist Vietnam. Um, what we thought we were fighting in Vietnam, a unified communist front, really did exist during Korea. Um, the incredible tragedy of the war that the U.S. fought in Vietnam is that at that point, it just didn't. I will never be a Douglas MacArthur fan. I'm not here to make any case for the way that the Korean War was fought in detail, but it is very, very interesting. I had not realized how important the Korean War was in stopping that momentum. Um, Stalin, Mao, uh, the family running uh, North Korea, that's still running uh, North Korea, if they had been successful there, then yes, I believe they would have looked for other places to, to push things forward. Their victory there would have inspired others. Um, and I think it was a worthwhile thing to do.
So yeah, uh, that was sort of surprising uh, to me. That was a, sort of a new thing uh, for me to learn that uh, the Korean War was actually worth fighting. Uh, I was wondering what I was going to do for my unproduced video today. Um, and uh, what I ended up doing uh, was I went and saw a uh, Chinese propaganda film uh, called The Battle of Lake Changlan. I uh, apologize if I have mispronounced that. I believe it is now possibly one of the best, uh, most successful films of all time, almost exclusively on the back of the Chinese market. And it is a propaganda film about the Chinese fighting Americans in Korea, which is, I think, something that we should all pay a little more attention to. Um, there, It is true that the Chinese armies fought uh, the U.S. armies in Korea, and it's a conflict that I think, uh, as we fall further and further into the new Cold War, that I think we should pay some more attention to. Uh, the film that I watched was this just sort of fascinating artifact, but there were some really interesting aspects of it that I hadn't really appreciated. The Chinese men that fought, the Chinese army that fought in Korea, uh, was made up, uh, to some extent, of uh, the victorious communist uh, armies that had just won a civil war in 1949. And then a year or two later, they were fighting and dying against U.S. troops in Korea. Um, and uh, obviously, it was not as much of a victory as it was sold uh, uh, for China in this propaganda film, but it, 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 it's true. They did roll us out of, of North Korea. Um, and it's fascinating thinking about the sort of revolutionary fervor that must have been pushing uh, those Chinese soldiers and that, that it was able to be essentially not broken, but, but absorbed. Um, I believe the, um, uh, the propaganda film might uh, spin that as a Chinese victory, but I believe it's come out in the archives that sort of Stalin and Mao and the family running uh, Korea um, had decided we were gonna t they were going to take South Korea as a united front. That was something they were going to try. Um, and while the Chinese uh, military that went in to support uh, the, the North Koreans uh, when it started going very poorly, uh, when the U.S. marched its way up the Korean Peninsula, was successful in pushing the U.S. back out, the cost to China was extraordinary. This is a China that had just finished uh, dealing with uh, about 20 years of Japanese uh, occupation, depending on, well, more than that, depending on the parts of China we're talking about, um, and then had gone through a, after this massive uh, fight, struggle against Japan that ended in 1945, there were a couple uh, years there, I think, of attempting to uh, make peace between the communists and the nationalists. But then you had a massive civil war terminating in 1949. And then the victorious armies of Chinese communism um, had a lot of momentum. And uh, it was interesting watching this film and just sort of realizing that, yeah, I mean, these were the folks who, who ha had that extraordinary victory, were motivated by that. Um, and were motivated enough to throw themselves against uh, the arsenal of democracy that had just won World War II uh, to uh, not as much success as the film claims, but really to a, to a stalemate um, and back to the sort of status quo. I think that uh, Stalin, Mao, um, realized that actually combat wasn't going to work for them and was going to be very costly. Um, and I do believe, with the exception of some border clashes with India and Russia and a very poorly advised and unsuccessful invasion of Vietnam in the late 70s. I don't believe the Chinese military has done much, uh, I'm sure I'm missing something, has done much expeditionary since. Um, so as painful as the Korean War uh, was for the United States and as many failures as we experienced there from a broader geopolitical context, yeah, I believe uh, yeah, the Korean War was a good thing to do, which is kind of crazy. Um, nothing since then, though. Uh, yeah, nothing uh, since then. Uh, another uh, thing that I might do an unproduced video on, uh, should I find myself similarly unprepared for, a, uh, for my Tuesday deadline in the future, is talking about how I really do think the Cold War kind of ended in 1956 with that duality of the Suez Crisis, where the United States acted to...
uh, save a third world country from an imperial invasion. Um, and uh, the, at the same time, the crushing of Hungary's attempt to go its own way with socialism by the Soviet Union. I think really at that point, the Cold War kind of ended and it's really just US mistakes that kept it going on from there before you know, Paul Volcker ended uh, the Soviet Union. But anyway, there's a lot of uh, differing interpretations that I'm coming out with and I'll be testing, testing out uh, probably in more unproduced videos or maybe video shorts um, in the months to come. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, please subscribe. And yes, there should be a produced Ethiopia video coming up in the next week or so. Thanks so much. Please like, subscribe. And yes, of course, let me know what you think about this in the comments. Um, I need to hear more uh, from all of you folks. Uh, test out these ideas, make them stronger. Um, yeah, all right, thanks.